Hi guys, it's Coach Joe Michel with Performance One Advanced Sports Training. We get a lot of questions about sets and reps when it comes to Olympic weightlifting for the classic list, and that's the snatch or the clean and jerk. What should your sets and rep ranges should be for those? And then a little bit about your, your strength accessory exercises. I have a whiteboard over here, and, and in our program, when it comes to our sets and reps, we kind of have different categories. We have everything from warm up, and then we have pre work, and then we have work and then we may have drop sets. Now, within these categories, all four may be utilized in one workout, or they may, you may be building into that. For example, a beginner may be just working on warm-up sets and pre-work sets, and maybe just occasionally a work set and may not have any drop set because they haven't got to that point in terms of their volume. Depending on the cycle, the training cycle that you're at, you may have these. So for example, you may have warm-ups anywhere between the one to three set range. Pre-work sets, that's usually what we're using for technical skill, okay? That could also be one to three. This is going to be a building up of intensity. This is going to be constant. For example, this may be something like 50%, 60%, 70%. This may be between 70 and 80 percent, but it's to be consistent. So one or the other, it's not going to be building. <clears throat> and then you're going to have your work, okay? And that can range anywhere from one to eight sets. And this could be also constant, ascending, or variable, okay? So you may have now multiple different options. This usually is one, this is this, and this is going to be anywhere between 80 and can be up to 100 percent, but it could be usually Usually the range is between 80 and 97%, but it can also be. And then you have drop sets, and that could be also usually typically is one to three, but it can be, you know, like I said, there are exceptions to that. And that could be descending, or that can be constant as well, okay? And when constant though, it's a drop from this. How much of a drop from this can be anywhere between 10% to 30% from whatever you did in this working set range. I just wrote some notes down, okay? So, and we'll go over this real quick. So, why a warm up? For the obvious reason. This is where you're warming both from a technical standpoint and, and what we say, grease the track, okay? Technically, you're greasing the track from a standpoint of technique and getting the body warmed up. This can also vary, one to three, it also could vary depending on how strong you are. If you snatch 200 kilos, you're not gonna just do one to three sets, okay? You may take four or five sets, okay? To get to a point now, you're at your pre-work stage and your work. Depending on the phase of your training, you may not have this, okay? You may go from this to this, okay? And now also not have this. You may just go boom, boom. If you're in the off season, you're gonna probably incorporate almost all of four of these. 50 to 60, up to 70, 75%. Warm-ups again are getting your body ready technically for what you're gonna do that day. So for example, if it's a snatch, you're taking these reps, okay? You're taking repetitions anywhere between that three to five. And then you should have anywhere between 10, 15, up to 20 reps of some type of warm up, okay? And this may also include not including your barbell work. Why? We want our body in a good little sweat for whatever you're doing that day. Again, say it's snatch, so you've gotten it. In my personal philosophy and a philosophy of many coaches, anything below an 80% of intensity is just a warm up, okay? It's just in these kind of categories of warm up. You're not doing, you're not, you're not eliciting a physiological stimulus that's great enough to get an effect. Now, that's more so too if you're a more advanced level lifter. Okay, you're a beginner, anything that you do that's above, you know, 50, 60%, you're getting some type of adaptation to it, okay? But in reality, you're not getting any type of actual performance gains until you get into your 80% range. So you're getting your body ready technically for that movement. Then we have some type of technical skill or pre-work, okay? Not everybody does this, okay? We do this a variety of different ways. This could be the same exercise. You're snatching, you're snatching, you're snatching, you're snatching. This could be you're warming up to snatch, and then we get here, and this may be like a snatch complex. It could be, say, you're doing slow snatches. You're doing position snatches, okay? Snatch from the floor, snatch from above the knee. <clears throat> you could be doing powers, okay? Some people like to do powers and then go into full snatches, okay? Or regular snatches, okay? It is some type of technical skill or just snatch. 
but you're staying there not at an intensity that's a little bit more than your warm up. That you kind of have to concentrate a little bit on between that 75 and 80%. Okay, they're not gimmies. Okay, they're not just like I can just kind of like just pick the bar up and I know I'm going to make it anytime. I have to put a little bit of thought into it. But you're also working on some type of skill with it. Okay, I'm trying to stay over the bar. I'm trying to work on position work. Okay, I'm doing the slow snatches. And you're using that as a prep for this. Okay, a fine tuning. Some coaches will do technical work and then go completely into a completely different exercise like cleans. I'm like, well, no, you just did a technical drill for the snatch, say slow snatches or three position snatch, snatch from above the knee, power snatches. You want to see, does that transfer into the movement that you just did? If you're doing a technical skill and then five days later you do the snatch, how the frig do you know that that actually transferred in? You don't, okay? We want to do it then immediately followed into that movement. It's like taking some light batting practice and then go seeing live pitch. Okay, you wanna see that those technical things you were working on in the batting cage now are working on that. Is doing situational and technical drills in a wrestling and learning a, a particular move, then you go into now a live situation or a situation that's a little more intense and say, hey, does it work? Okay, I wanna see if it works. And that's what we do here. Again, my belief is that it has to be a constant intensity. You don't want it to go up and down. You want it to be for at least those couple sets. Again, usually the sweet spot is three, is that you're hitting three sets, two to three sets. Again, again, minimum of one, but usually it's in that two to three range. Okay, let's even just put that because one is not going to be bullshit. Is that, and you're at that weight that says, hey, are you getting this in there? Okay, are you getting this now down? I got that understanding, I got that technical skill. And again, these could be drills all on to their end and you just stop here and it could be, like I said, four or five sets of that. But when you're doing it and continuing on with the snatch, usually again, usually between the two to three, okay? And then that's gonna prepare you for the work. And that's what we like to say where the magic is really happening. This is where, like I said, majority of us coaches that are of high level are really only counting this, okay? We're only counting what you did here. Some coaches will count everything, and yes, you have to count that. But in reality, do I know if you really may are making progress? As we like to say in the gym, did you hit your numbers? When we say, did you hit your numbers? We're talking about this. This, is, again, is going to be a minimum, in my mind, anywhere between 80, and again, it can go up to 100%. But in reality, what you're going to be working on for a variety of sets and reps is going to be between that 80 and 97%. Okay, they're going to say, hey, can we hit this? Okay, and then this can be a constant that you said, all right, for five sets of two, we're in that range, okay? Sorry, the reps over here are gonna be, again, anywhere between three to four reps. Excuse me, three to, uh, two to three reps, excuse me. This is gonna be anywhere between two to three reps and how many sets, we already talked about the sets up here. Constant, meaning you're staying at that same rep scheme at that same percentage of intensity for all the sets, okay? So I'm staying at 80%, four or five sets, of two reps. I want to see now, can they mentally stay consistent versus now they did all this stuff. They got up to their 80% or 85% and they said, man, I got it coach. And then, they, then they can't sustain that for set two, three, or they look good for two and three, but then four, five, they look like dog shit or four, five, six, they look bad. That is not only physical testing of the athlete to see, are they in condition to handle that, but are they mentally in a position they can sustain that higher level of intensity. And that's where people go, hey man, you're good for one set, great, awesome. But we need to see if you can sustain that mental focus and intensity over now five sets, over six sets. Because now they may be taking a rest interval of two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, okay? So for five sets of that, and you're resting two minutes for at least 10 minutes, to the next 10 to 15 minutes, can you be dialed in? Now that doesn't include all this, okay? Can you be dialed in? And you may play around with that variable of rest. It could be three minutes in between. It could be five minutes in between. Can you take a five minute break, come back and still hit your 90% for five singles? I did the first two pretty good and I lost my shit in the last three. And it wasn't a physical thing. It may have been a tech, technical component of you just weren't dialed in. and You couldn't sustain. But then it could be physical. Like we had a guy in the day, he could not sustain that physical consistency by set four and five. So we, then it gives me an idea where he's at and realize where he's at right now for that, that particular percentage of intensity, he couldn't handle it, okay? So it gives me an idea where is he at in his conditioning and his overall shape. <clears throat> Again, 
You may be in season or getting closer to an event or it's an even an unload period of time. And you may say, listen, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I'm only going to do one here, one set here, because I still want to touch on something to get at least to an 80%, but I don't want to overwork myself. And then other periods of your training cycle, you may say, hey, I need to spend a lot of time here. Okay. I may have to spend a majority of my sets and reps and my majority of my loading being done right here. Ascending means like within that now multiple sets, we're constantly going up. Okay, we're working up each set of that four sets, five sets. So we went 80, 83, 86, 87, some kind of jump. Where we're just taking five kilo jumps up, 10 kilo jumps up for that five sets. I want to see what they can do. I want to see as we keep adding weight, progressively overloading them, do they stay consistent? Variable can be anything. It, be, it may be a way of approach. You maybe go up, you may come back down. You may go up, come back down. Okay, you're, going, you're starting at 80%, you go up to 95%, you come back to 80%, you go back up. You're now changing that variable of that intensity. They're still within the, in these parameters, but they don't know. Okay, you're going to go up, you're going to come back down, you may go back up, but at a different jump. So for example, if someone clean and jerking, they start at 150, they go 160, they go 170, they top out at 180. Great. Second wave through, they may now, instead of starting at 150, may start at 153 and they may take different jumps. One, to get the athlete ready. And they may take bigger jumps, smaller jumps to get that athlete ready. They may say, hey, we're gonna go keep 80 as our consistent drop and go 80, 90, and back down. 80, 95, back down, okay? And make different variable jumps. Condition the athlete to be able to take that because he may have to do that in a competition in terms of the warmups. He just hit his first opening attempt. She may just hit her first opening attempt and we have to go in the back room because now we have 15 attempts out. What do we do? We do nothing, sit there for 20 minutes, or we take some different jumps. Be ready for that. Plus, it's a, it's a way too, from a conditioning standpoint, but it's also from a mental standpoint, can you handle this variable of stress and still be locked in for that period of time? That the athlete and the coach relationship knows that I can put anything on that friggin' bar and they can either dial it up to that 97% intensity or 100% intensity, but dial and ratchet it back down to 80%. I had one guy in particular earlier in his career, anytime we did anything where we did a variable like this, we came back down, he always missed the lighter weight. And I said, what the frig is going on? He's like, coach, I'm up here and I can't bring myself back down. And I said, that's not good because there's going to be a time and a place where we have to bring ourselves back down and, and understand that. And he was very young in his career and it was very hard for us to get him to understand that. He eventually never made that connection. So <clears throat> then we have drop sets. And drop sets, some people consider it like taboo or unconventional to do them, I think that's bullshit. I think drop sets are huge, especially in Olympic weightlifting. Before they would just be used for strength training exercise, but I think it's huge. You just worked up to very high intensity level, say you're in a 90% range, okay? You got through them, but you know what? We want to just kind of just end on a lighter, positive, fast, technically sound note. So now we drop them from that 90% down, okay, to 80 or down to even, like I said, 65, 70%, and just say, hey, just be really crisp. Again, it may be a descending order. You may have been 90% here, you're gonna go 80, 75, 70. Or you're just dropping it to that 75 and say, hey, we're gonna stay here and be crisp for two or three sets, just to kind of almost like a cool down, a technical cool down. I was saying, hey, just, you just did that, now let's be really sharp, okay? I want you to end on a positive note. But say they had dog shit, they looked like dog shit, or say they missed then we're going to come back down here and at least get salvage something out of that day. They say they weren't making their 90%. And even though we dropped the 80%, then they made one or two. You're like, okay, great. And they said, hey, you know what? We're going to get a little extra work here. And that could be anywhere between this. Okay. Extreme situations, it could be that. Okay. But mainly it's going to be there. Again, what's the goal? You're working on speed, technical control, and some say, like I said, uh, that I put it over there up here. Sometimes that hype, that endurance or an extra little bit of volume. Okay, you just don't want to do it up here because they already beat themselves up. Plus 90%, when you drop down here to 75 or even 80%, that 70%, even though it's 70% or 75% of their one, one rep max, it's going to feel a lot heavier because now we have a cumulative effect of fatigue at this point. So 75, even by like the numbers, may feel still like 80 percent. So we're still getting something out of that with these particular athletes. So again, that's how we set things up. Again, we may use two out of four, 
We may use three out of four. We may use all four of these parameters during the course of the year, during the course of the training cycle. And again, not all the time. As a coach, you gotta know when to use this. You gotta know when I'm only doing one set here, I'm doing three sets here, two sets here, if I'm even doing these, and how many of these are good. Now, if you spend 15 sets warming up, okay, it's gonna leave you limited space over here. You want the athlete to take the least amount of sets they need so that they're technically and physically warmed up. But again, that doesn't mean this. This is something different, okay? This is that we're working on some type of skill once they've been warmed up. And this is now we're warmed up, we technically feel like they're very sound. Now we need to put what we do our work in, okay? Our work to determine if the numbers that we're predicting for them to be able to hit down the road, they are staying on track to do from a load standpoint. This again is now to finish with that technical control, a little more speed with that technical control when they're fatigued, managing fatigue, and understanding that we can actually get in a little bit more volume of work that <clears throat> we may not have been able to get into. Again, this is my approach. Some other coaches take this approach um, and some don't, okay? If this is new to you, great. Hopefully you learned something. If you think this is dog shit, then go f up. No, just kidding. Take that out. Um, but like I said, this is an approach that we have taken. I've, I've, I've played around this and talked with a lot of coaches from all over the world. Again, in different aspects of this program or the following this sequence, again, and this is not completely, <clears throat> nothing on here is written in stone, okay? As a coach, you have to develop that understanding of your athletes, of your program, what they are capable of doing at different periods of that journey, of that, that weightlifting journey that you're ready for. Some of this stuff may be two years out that you're able to implement with your athletes. Some of it, you can go, hey, I can, we could do some of this stuff right now. You know, I didn't look at it like this before. Well, now you look at it. When you now categorize these areas or these, 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 these time periods within their workout, it makes more sense. It gives everything a meaning. So again, we're not doing this just because like we're doing like a mindless bicep curl. Okay, we're doing this with everything has a goal in mind so that at the end of the day, we're technically more per, uh, efficient. The quality of the, the reps is huge. I don't like wasting reps. I don't like wasting sets. Are there some that have to be th thrown out? Yes, but we don't wanna do that, can, we don't wanna do that on a too frequent basis. By having this approach, especially in these first two categories, but even by doing this, periodically cuts down on missed lifts here, okay? Everybody wants to get to here, because this is, again, where the magic is, okay? Where the, mo where the money is made is here. But the problem is, is that too many people, again, don't spend enough time here and here and here, okay? Developing their craft, developing the skill sets necessary. The less you have to think about technique because you've spent the time on these opposite areas honing it down, the more success you're gonna have here. The more weights you're gonna make on that competition platform. Hope this helps. Any questions, please like the like button and, and send them to us in our inbox.